listen to fax transmissions. So, so uh, that thing's not dead yet. Um, other, another analog communication satellite system that is not, not so much for video, but for phone lines is, is Inmarsat A. Um, that's, that's still also an analog system. There are uh, the successors in Marset B and C. Uh, those are more advanced, but the old system is still in use. And, um, well, you can listen to interesting things there, too. Um, well, then uh, there were, of course, the military and intelligence satellite, also pointed out by my colleague, um, that was intensified uh, in those years, and uh, there were also uh, interesting transmissions there that could be even seen with just normal home TV equipment. You, you had just turned the dish a bit around. Um, for example, there, there was a an, an satellite uh, placed more or less above the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and uh, during uh, the, the uh, war in Yugoslavia, the U.S. military just booked some transponders there. The, the, uh, the, the U.S. military is famous for outsourcing many things like communications, and the, the outsourced partner just bought some some plane transponder space for TV transmissions, and, well, uh, someone accidentally t tuned to that transponder and saw things like reconnaissance planes flying around Yugoslavia, uh, observing suspicious places, and it had also some, some communications there. Well, that, there are sources for that. It's, it's even covered in books. You can, can read, uh, read on about that. We'll place information about where you can find this uh, on the website. The URL will be provided at the end. OK, so the more interesting things, UFO and fleets.com. UFO is just an, an acronym for, uh, for what was it? Sorry, I forgot. But <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's um, the communication system that was basically brought up uh, sh very shortly before the first Gulf War. Uh, the Bush administration, the first Bush administration, had um, said, well, okay, we need a communication system for our armed forces, for an external mission, for a war now. Well, I think they, they asked Boeing, okay, you have two months, give us satellites in orbit. Mm, well, ten things, ten pieces or so. Just give them. Well, they had no time for, for real security. It's just plain old bent pipe repeaters. It's just, you can point a directional antenna at the satellite and uh, listen to communications. They are plain, mostly plain narrowband frequency modulation. Well, you could even send narrow frequency modulated signals on the input frequencies. That would certainly work later on. A, a bit more about that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thanks. Um, some more. Echelon. Echelon is mostly referred to um, as being a ground based system. There are also some satellites in orbit that are quite huge and have quite big possi uh, possibilities and capabilities. There is all information on that. Uh, we don't have the time to cover that, but um, you can visit us later on or uh, look at the site. We will have some information for you there. Um, they have really big things in orbit that have really big ears. 
Okay, um, Skynet is just the British version or, or the Italian version. Well, there are also other military nets, of course. Brits have their own, Italians have their own, Russians have their own, and Skynet is one of those. Um, if I recall correctly, that uh, this one has also some lower frequency, easy to use comms, but that's not, not so much wide known. Um, okay, of course, uh, those military satellites have also um, not so easy to use transponders, but later, later on a bit more. Okay, so now we'll have to also cover the scientific satellites. Um, for example, Meteosat, one of the mo more known satellites that's just providing, for example, weather images. All the infamous Cryosat that, uh, well, had a cold encounter around the North Pole. It didn't make it into orbit. Sad thing. Okay, so uh, let's um, leave that and see for the future. What, what does the future hold for us? Well, everything's going broadband at the moment. Broadband also at home in your, uh, your DSL lines, but also into orbit. Um, broadband broadcast, a bullshit word for that would be HD TV and things like that. Um, well, maybe it will prove useful, but that's what we have to expect. There are new standards deployed at the moment, and analog comms are being phased out since some years, and uh, they will cease to exist in the very near, near future. You can look at the, the channel lists on the set pages like linksat.com and see there are not very uh, many of those analog transponders left. What, what really might be a next big thing is mobile individual communication. Uh, uh, it has been there for some time, but it was very expensive and um, it's not yet there. But it really can be a thing like convergence between the normal based uh, terrestrial systems that are like uh, GSM or UMTS or EDGE and uh, for areas where there is no coverage there probably will be mobile individual communications with, by, based on satellites. Also as this will be used for well, is used also for uh, communications on sea or for tracking uh, containers, for, for example. That's based on a, a mixed thing like GSM, GPS and, and other communication modes to track where is that container at the moment exactly. Because it really happened that containers just disappeared in the past. Okay, an interesting thing we think will happen is forgotten satellites that will prove to be, well, still able to work. Um, if ac accidentally, for example, a transponder is, is left on, you could easily use it for your own means. For example, an old satellite uh, that is no longer actively maintained, that is no, no longer bringing much money in, in for the company that shot it into orbit, is also not very actively monitored. So that could mean that you can slip some things through just on the side. Okay, so, so much for that more theoretical part. Now on to the hands-on thing. Well, there are the passive parts, the active parts, and the legal parts here. Now we'll cover the passive parts. You, of course, need some, some antennas that can be dish antennas, like for TV, or Yagi Uda antennas, or logarithmic 
periodic antennas. Um, some very easy to obtain. Just go into a store downtown and buy a an DVBT logarithmic periodic antenna and you're all set to, for example, listen to some fleets that come. Um, modulations used on the interesting things that are easy to listen to are mostly uh, narrowband FM <laughs> modulations. So receivers are not, not that hard to get. Uh, things sometimes uh, proving more difficult are the low, lo low noise blocks and some modulation hardware if, it, if it's more advanced. Uh, but things can, can be organized, can be bought. It's uh, not, not that hard to get that stuff. Examples here for, for the easy stuff is weather satellites. Um, there are downstreams on around 130 megahertz that can be easy listened to. Um, that's easy for your first steps into sat satellite listening. A thing also quite often mentioned is the DVB IP bro broadcasting, Sky DSL and other things uh, referred to. Well, there is a permissious mode, of course. You can listen to all that stuff flowing down from the orbit. There was a lecture on that yesterday. Uh, I'll mention it once again in, in the legal part because I think it's, it's important to do that. Uh, analog voice traffic, as mentioned before, for example, the UFO satellites, etc., is, is not very hard to, to receive, just normal scanner hardware. Uh, covering frequencies up to 400 megahertz should fully suffice. Well, another thing sometimes neglected is ground stations. You can certainly look directly at ground stations. You don't have to look at the satellite itself to see some satellite communications. There are ground stations everywhere nowadays. The, the big ground stations for example, Echelon, but Eibling moving to Darmstadt, Griesheim at the moment, or the less known near Frankfurt, Usingen, um, German telecom ground station providing international satellite communication feeds and stuff. You can point an antenna at those dishes and easily you will listen to what is sent into orbit. That's often forgotten. Just to, to mention that. Okay, so go for the active part. Um, I have to mention there's a legal and an Ill illegal part here. That's a very thin line to cross. Uh, at least you'll need some modulators to uh, create a signal. The easiest could be a um, modified amateur radio transmitter. You'll need some power amplifier, that's what the PA stands for, um, to produce the sufficient high frequency power to send uh, a signal to the satellites. Of course, you'll need an antenna uh, for that frequency too. Examples to work here, to actually work, are the fleet satcom satellites. Um, if you listen to those, you'll sometimes find, for example, South American party lines, <laughs> people chatting, definitely not military traffic. Um, well, it's a cheap phone line, I'd say. You just need a transmitter and a receiver. <laughs> um, not, not, not very much done uh, to prevent this. Well, the satellites have almost no means to prevent this. Um, you could fool with, oh, sorry. Um, you could, of course, fool with uh, the Inmarsat satellites, um, especially with the Inmarsat A satellites. As I mentioned before, uh, some satellites are not that actively monitored anymore. You could try to slip in some signals. Um, another thing that is 
um, theory, but could well be possible, is um, sometimes